Hey, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. Our medical system in the United States is really good at some things, but not so good at others. If you have a heart attack, if you're in a bad injury, if you need an orthopedic surgery, you're in the right place. But if you have osteoporosis and you're worried about what to do next, especially if you don't wanna take medications, our medical system is not well designed to take care of you and to meet your needs. Stick around, because I'm gonna talk about my experience as an orthopedic surgeon managing the fractures that come from osteoporosis, how I saw people managed by the system, where I saw people fall through the cracks, and potentially what you can do about it. So here's the number one thing I want you to take away from this video. And I'm gonna put this first because I really want you to hear it. So the challenge with osteoporosis in our traditional medical system is that there isn't a subspecialty for osteoporosis. If you think about how our system has been developed over time, we have primary care, which in theory can manage everything, but everybody else has gotten really subspecialized and there's no subspecialty for osteoporosis. Now primary care can certainly manage it and discuss it, but they have so many things to discuss in an office visit that you can't expect a primary care doctor to really dig into in a deep and meaningful way the roots and foundation of osteoporosis, even if they know everything about it. And in the subspecialties, it's just not what they do. So when you're at an orthopedic surgeon's office, they don't have the medical knowledge typically. And even if they have a fracture liaison service, which is where they, they hopefully will be able to send patients after they fracture, they're gonna be very heavily weighted on pharmaceuticals because their primary goal is preventing a second fracture. And that's the fastest way to do it. They are not gonna have the time nor the resources to get into the foundations of osteoporosis. Rheumatology, endocrinology, all of these subspecialists are focused mainly on other disease states and osteoporosis is just something that they see and then they're making really recommendations again about pharmaceuticals. And that goes really to the foundation of where our system has gone, which is if you're treating disease states, you're generally as a physician, if you have a very short period of time, going to recommend a powerful tool that can have a, a significant impact in a short period of time and that's generally gonna be pharmaceuticals. So in my opinion, I don't think that you should fault the doctors that are in the system for leaning on pharmaceuticals to manage osteoporosis, if they're not getting to what you want, which is a foundational approach, it's because you're in the wrong system. It is very, very difficult to find a doctor who has the knowledge, the time built into the system, and the system in place to be able to actually provide all the things that you need. And that's one of the reasons why we built what we built through Optimal Bone Health. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is the pharmaceuticals or the drugs for osteoporosis. So there is a very high failure rate of osteoporosis drugs. And it's not because the drugs don't do what they say that they do, they do, although we'll talk about the details of that. The failure rate is because patients don't wanna take them. And I'm not faulty patients for not wanting to take them. If you look statistically, there's an 80% failure rate because patients don't wanna take the drugs. Why is that? Well, if you look at the potential side effects, and if you read about these things online, they sound absolutely atrocious. And there are real side effects because the drugs are doing something very significant in your body. Now, in general, my approach is to avoid osteoporosis drugs as much as possible. There is a time and a place if you are really struggling and you're trying to prevent, a, especially a secondary fracture, meaning you've already had a fracture and you are trying to prevent a second fracture and you have a very fragile bone, there is definitely a place for osteoporosis drugs. But the problem is, is that, as I mentioned before, if you are a physician in the traditional medical model and you are being told that you have seven minutes to see a patient and they have osteoporosis, there's nothing else for you to do other than prescribe a drug. So, Patients are being put into that environment, they hear the bad things about the drugs, and then they wanna do whatever else they can, but then they're really stuck in this in-between where they just don't know where to go. And there is a lot of misinformation out there, uh, a lot of bad information out there. And so then we see doctors who are really just trying to help people to not have a fracture or to not have a second fracture, and then they're really pushing drugs on people. And so you end up with this really dangerous back and forth. So I'll just say this about the different drug classes, and we'll have entire talks on the, the drugs themselves, but there are basically three classes of drugs now. There are drugs that block bone breakdown, there are drugs that help with bone buildup, 
And then there are drugs that kind of do both. The drugs that block bone breakdown generally are in the bisphosphonate category, the most commonly prescribed drugs for osteoporosis. And they are that way because they are, they, there are oral formulations of this drug. The challenge with these drugs is that they have some significant GI side effects. There are some very kind of scary GI side effects. And there are some long-term side effects like the risk for osteonecrosis of the jaw, which is rare, but real and very serious. Um, as well as the chance of what's called an atypical femur fracture if you take these drugs for more than either three years or five years, depending on the drug. And that presents one of the big challenges with all osteoporosis drugs is there is a very challenging look at what the long-term plan is. This is a different conversation if you're in your 80s or 90s, but what about if you're in your 50s? What are you gonna do for the next 30, 40 years or potentially longer? So when we look at bone health through the lens of longevity, we have to be really critical of the drugs we're selecting if we're gonna even potentially use a drug. The other class, the, the anabolic class, meaning the drugs that help with bone buildup, these are drugs also that have a very limited time frame in which you can use them. There is certainly a space for these drugs. The risk that people talk about with these drugs is the risk of what's called osteosarcoma, which is a, a, a rare in humans, cancer of the bone. Although this has been mostly overstated and the black box warning for these drugs has actually been removed by the FDA, people are still scared of these and that's perfectly okay but there is a role for these drugs in some circumstances. And then there's the drugs that do potentially both. They block bone breakdown and they potentially help with bone buildup. The most common of these is Prolia. Prolia is given, I think it's probably the most common drug throughout the country at this point. The challenge with Prolia is you will have to take it forever. And so there is a long-term plan there, but is that really a plan that you wanna do if you haven't extinguished all other options? And then there's a new drug on the market, it goes by the trade name Avenity. Um, this one could potentially avoid all of the complications of the, the bone breakdown drugs like bisphosphonates and prolia has a lot of those same risks, uh, but it's very new on the market. It's very popular in uh, some of the, the more progressive uh, fracture liaison services, and it could potentially be a good drug. You would likely have to take it forever, uh, but it's also very new. And so we just don't have a lot of, of long-term track record with this drug. So this is why people are concerned about the drugs because they see that there are a lot of potential serious risks and what's the long-term plan. But if I'm a doctor that says, well, I want to prevent you from having a fracture in the next 12 months, then some of these drugs might seem reasonable. So we have to come to an agreement on, on you know, what is your fracture risk? What are the things that you have tried? Are there other things that you can try before you go on a drug? And then as a last resort, potentially the drugs are the right thing to do, but that's not the conversation that's being had. And that's why so many people are pushing back against the medical community and saying, I don't wanna take these drugs. I'm just gonna ignore my osteoporosis. And that I think is dangerous. Hey, sorry to interrupt this video, but if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe, like, and sign up for notifications so you can get notified whenever we have new content available on this topic. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them with the share icon below. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis at Optimal Bone Health, click on the link below for the masterclass. That's where we go over how we manage osteoporosis and give lots of tips and tricks of things that you can do on your own. So the third piece of information I wanna give out here is all about what happens if you have a fracture. Now, this is not to scare people, but I want to explain from a surgeon's perspective how people with osteoporosis are being managed in the system and why this is something that you absolutely want to avoid. I mentioned earlier that people that are afraid of the drugs and refuse to take them, oftentimes they just stick their head in the sand and don't do anything about their bone health. And I think that's really dangerous because what can happen is ultimately you have that bad fracture. If you end up having a fracture, I'm gonna walk you through what I have seen as an orthopedic surgeon, the process and how people are typically managed. And I'm gonna go from a descriptive perspective on what a hip fracture looks like. Spine fractures, shoulder fractures, all variations of the same thing, but hip fractures are the worst. So this is what it looks like. When you have a hip fracture, you will either have it from a fall or it'll break and you'll fall. Hopefully you'll be found right away and you can get help right away and you'll be taken to the emergency room. In the emergency room, they'll get x-rays. 
They'll give you pain medicine. They will call the orthopedic surgeon. The orthopedic surgeon will likely get the, the fixation part, the surgery part scheduled right away because these things are urgent, if not considered emergent. And you'll have surgery probably within the next 24 hours. A lot of times that happens depending on the facility in the middle of the night because that's the only operating room time that is available. And you will have a meeting with the surgeon right before you have surgery. You may or may not remember it because of the pain medicine that you've been given. And then you wake up the next day and you will hopefully be seen by that surgeon. If not, you'll be seen by that surgeon's team in rounding. And then eventually you will be shipped out of the hospital to either a, a short-term or intermediate care facility. Rarely do you go home right away. And hopefully you would get discharged from that early facility to home, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But as I've said before in some of my videos, only about one third of patients regain independence after a hip fracture. So then after you've been sent to the facility, about a month after your surgery, you come in to see the doctor that did the surgery. This might be the first time you actually remember talking to your doctor. And then they're gonna to talk to you about osteoporosis. Hopefully, they're gonna to talk to you about your recovery from your fracture, which is what they're actually trained to do. And then they're gonna likely refer you to somebody to help you manage your osteoporosis. Now this is where there is a tremendous amount of variability. So if the practice is very steeped in knowledge of osteoporosis, they're gonna have a fracture liaison service in place. They're gonna have somebody within the practice or within the hospital facility that is going to be a specialist in osteoporosis and walk you through your risk factors for having another fracture and then probably make recommendations for medications based off of that. More commonly though, you're gonna be referred to either your primary care doctor your internist or an endocrinologist or a rheumatologist to help to manage your bone health. And typically, again, you're gonna end up having a conversation about medications. Rarely is anybody gonna have a conversation about how to holistically manage your bone health. So this is clearly something that you want to avoid. And that is why I'm so passionate about talking about osteoporosis, making these videos, because I wanna get the word out that this is something that you can do something about. Everybody's case is different, so I can't tell you whether or not you need to take a medication or not, but you should have a conversation with somebody who can understand what the power of a holistic approach to osteoporosis can do, whether or not medications are right for you. So when it comes to the state of affairs for osteoporosis within the traditional medical community, you really have to go in with the right understanding and the right expectations. And your expectations should be this, that there is not a single doctor that is trained to be a specialist in osteoporosis in the traditional medical model. It just doesn't exist. They don't have time to have a comprehensive conversation about your care, about the lifestyle that goes into it, about the nutrition, about gut dysfunction, about the right supplementation. If they can talk about even a little bit of those things, they're way ahead of the curve. At this point, most doctors know that patients with osteoporosis really don't wanna take drugs for osteoporosis. And so they're either going to be extra pushy or they're gonna be extra passive and just let you choose your own path forward. Neither of those approaches are particularly productive for the patient because you really need to have a good back and forth about what your fracture risk really looks like, if you even know, um, and then what the real risks and benefits of those drugs are. And then you also need to understand that for most of the drugs, there is really not a good long-term plan on what to do in the next three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, because most of the drug capacity that we have at this point is really focused on two to five years. And that's why non-pharmacological comprehensive bone health is absolutely the most important thing that you could focus on because it takes a look at the functional side of things, the gut health, the nutrition, the lifestyle, all of the things that you can do to help improve your bone health, potentially without drugs or potentially in concert with drugs. No matter what you choose, I implore you to take action and take control of your bone health. Figure out exactly where you are, know what your fracture risk is, pick your team, and then move forward and know when you are gonna measure your bone health again, what's the right time frame, what exactly are you doing to help improve things, and then if you're not getting better, then change course. Work with a different team, take a different approach, but do something. Otherwise, you're gonna end up like most people who are gonna continue to lose bone and then ultimately be at higher risk for fracture. Well, thanks for listening to this relatively negative video about the state of affairs of osteoporosis. 
Thank you for coming to the end because I think it's really important that we understand exactly where we are within the system so that you can know what you need to do outside of the system to help improve your bone health. If you liked this video, please subscribe, like, and sign up for notifications. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share it with them. If you want to learn more about how we manage osteoporosis, please look for the link of the masterclass in the description below, and you can learn more about how we manage osteoporosis and you learn a whole bunch of tips and tricks about how you can do more things for your bone health at home. Lastly, I wanna hear from you. Please leave comments below. We will get to them as quickly as we can. And if you want to learn more about any particular topic on bone health or longevity, please leave it in the comments below and we'll create content on the most popular topics.